Okay, so we're going to look at trigonometry now. So trigonometry is relating sides and angles of triangles. And the first type of triangle we're going to look at is the right triangle. So a right triangle has a 90 degree angle in it at some point here, so we're going to call that at uh, vertex C. Okay? And the way we're going to label these is we're going to label the capital letters at the angle or the vertex and the corresponding small letter on the opposite side. So in this right triangle, we have the hypotenuse, and then we have the other two sides here. And what we're going to do is relate the angles at the vertices. So the uh, angle at A is, going, is referred to officially as angle A. So this is an angle sign here. Um, but we may just call it A in some of the formulas. So instead of saying sine of angle A, A here, it's going to be understood that it means sine of this angle sign in front of the A. Okay. Sine now is defined as, so sine is like a function. that You take the sine of a number and it's going to give you another number on your calculator. So for example, if I have my calculator here, if I do the, the sign button, which is right here, of uh, 46, it's going to take that 46 in and give you another number. Well, what is the meaning of that number is what we're going to look at. Okay? So, the sign of an angle at A is going to equal the side A over side C. Okay, We're going to call this the opposite side to A. So, so angle A here, the side that's opposite to that is the one that's not connected to it, so it's over here. And then we have side C, so the hypotenuse. So sine of A equals opposite over hypotenuse. We have another operator called cosine, and we have another one called tan. So cosine of A is going to be the adjacent, the one that is next to A. Well, the hypotenuse is also next to A, but it's got a name called hypotenuse. We're going to leave it as hypotenuse. So adjacent is B over C. Okay? So, or adjacent over hypotenuse. Sine opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tan is the other option. So we've used hypotenuse in these two. So now we're just going to use opposite and adjacent. So tan of A is opposite over adjacent. The neat thing about tan, if you look at um, stuff you already know, equations of lines, if I was to make a triangle here, then continue that hypotenuse on, so a right triangle there, okay? If this is the angle, angle A, tan of A is opposite over adjacent, okay, like that. So it's opposite over adjacent, rise over run. So the tan of angle A is the same as the slope of the hypotenuse which is kind of neat. Um, and the neat thing about this is that if I go out further, the slope of this hypotenuse doesn't change. So if I don't change this angle, the tan of that angle is the slope and it never changes because we have similar triangles here. Okay, So those, the small triangle here is similar to the big triangle here. So the ratio of this side over this side is the same as the ratio of this side over this side. Okay, so that's why tan of a specific angle stays the same no matter how big the triangle is. And the same thing for cosine and sine. They're just a relationship between other sides. So there's opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse there. Okay, so if the triangle gets bigger, they're just similar triangles. Now we're going to take a look at 
how some of this works. Okay, so a good way of remembering this, many people know um, or may have heard of, is this word Sokotoa. Sokotoa can be divided up into three chunks. Okay, so so means sine is opposite over hypotenuse, sine of the angle. Sometimes we call that theta. Okay, so that's a Greek letter theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so so, ka. And then toa is tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so t-o-a, t-o-a. Um, so that's one way of remembering this, so katoa. And this is good for right triangles, so remember that. So here's often how we label the triangle. They may not have the letters A, B, C, uh, in them, they might just have an angle theta, and you're asked to find something here. So it's tan, so sine theta, opposite over hypotenuse, tan theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, sorry, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so a quick example here. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so keep in mind the trigonometry at this point only works for right triangles. If that's not a right angle in there, this doesn't work. Okay, so let's take a look at this triangle here. So I've labeled this angle here theta, and I'm giving you this angle here as 63 degrees, and I'm giving you this one as 90 degrees. That's a right triangle. This side is 7. We want to find x, y, and theta. Okay, so the first thing we're going to solve for is um, x. Okay, so if we're going to solve for x, well, we're given this 7, so we want to use that and we want to get the x. So these two sides are opposite and adjacent to the angle that's given. So the one that does opposite and adjacent, well, that is tan. So I'm going to use tan. Tan of 63 is x over 7. Okay, I can't use sine of 63 because that would be an X and a Y and I don't have anything that's uh, going to help me solve for that. In these cases here, if you want to solve for something, you need two thing, You need to know two things. So you need to know theta and opposite, theta and adjacent, or opposite and adjacent, and then I can show you later how to find the angle. Okay. So tan of 63, show that you can put that into your calculator, equals X over 7. So, if you just do some algebra here, bring the 7 up to the other side, 7 times tan 63 equals x. So 7 times tan 63 equals x. Now you plug this into your calculator. Okay, so um, plug it in. Yeah, 7 times, I'm going to turn it on, 7 times tan. 63 and that gives you 13.738 okay so I'm going to round that to one decimal place and keep it as 13.7 so now what I have in this I have the adjacent side the opposite side and now I need the hypotenuse a couple ways to get the hypotenuse one, we can go back to math that we already know from before, which is Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse squared equals the sum of the other two sides squared. Right? So y squared equals x squared plus 7 squared. Okay, the hypotenuse squared equals x squared plus 7 squared. That's Pythagorean theorem. Okay? And when you use that, you get down to... 15.4. Okay. Or we could go back up here and say, okay, well, I could use cos because if I'm trying to find y, it's the hypotenuse, and I know the adjacent, which formula has adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, not sine, but cos does. Okay, so adjacent and hypotenuse, I can go in there. So I'm going to use that now. So cos of 63 
equals 7 over y. Cos of 63 equals adjacent over hypotenuse, 7 over y. Do some algebra with that. Now you want to solve for the y, bring the y up here, and the cos 63 down. Okay. And then you get y equals 7 over cos 63. Plug that into your calculator and you'll get 15.4. Now, to solve for the other unknown here, which is the other angle. Well, that should be easy. It's not uh, high-level math. You know that the angles in a triangle add up to 90 degrees, or 180 degrees. And so you're just going to do 180 minus 63 minus 90. And you get 27 is this other angle. Okay. Or, okay. So imagine you weren't given this angle of 63, but you had the sides. You know that tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent. So now 7 is the opposite to that angle. Tan of theta equals 7 over x. We know x is 13.7 approximately. So tan of theta we can write as 7 over 13.7. And your calculator has an undo button for trig. So if you can take the tan of the angle, then you can undo that. So right above tan, cosine, and sine, you have a sine with a negative 1 above it, and cos negative 1 and tan negative 1. That doesn't mean that it's an exponent of negative 1. That means it's an inverse. It undoes it. So like when you square a number, how do you undo that? You square root. So this, this sine minus 1, cos minus 1, and tan minus 1 is like the square root of trigonometry. Okay, So if tan theta equals that, then to get theta, you would undo tan by doing tan minus 1. So tan minus 1 on your calculator, do second tan minus 1, and it's 7 over 13.7, so 7 divided by... 13.7. Close that bracket, and it gives you 27 for an angle. Okay, which is what you got. You could have also used sine inverse. Okay, sine minus one is an inverse. Okay. Um, now, a few examples on this.